What can you do with 50 euros to create a new bonsai? A spruce. 18 euro 90. This is 17 euros for the bag. Not specific for bonsai, but for this current project they'll do the job. And at 6.99 and 8.99, beggars can't be choosers. This is of course not the first $50 challenge video that I make. I made one last year on this tree. So if you haven't seen that, I'll pop a link down below in the description. Don't go there now. First watch this one to the end. Then I'll give you an update at the end of this video on this you. All this inner growth that is just growing between the branches or in the scotches, just take it out. Don't need all this stuff in here. This pizza, today I'm going to repot it. I pruned it out in summer and over winter, if this responds well to the repotting, I'm going to wire it out. All that in this video. Good morning. Um, it's early morning, it's cold and we are headed towards winter. We are now in the last week of September. And this pizza I got a few months ago, I'd say in May, June. Um, Carlos from Bonsai, yeah. He started a Bonsai challenge earlier this year and I got this pizza, but I realized it's not an ideal time to repot pizza. So I decided to not do much about the tree. Preparation is everything. I've got a 50-50 mix of baked clay and pine bark. Nice, well mixed. Hopefully nice and airy with lots of organics. For the planting up, I think I have created an ingenious system. I've got a long rod with little depression, which I'm going to place at the bottom of the pot like this. And then you have an attachment point on these. I'm going to put these long wires for tying it in, just like so. And then of course you can put this at the bottom of the pot and you can put tension on it, it stays in place. Um, then I have some thicker wire and I'll explain to you what that is for in a second. And I have another set where it is, here it is, also for tying down the plant. So all of this is going to be at the bottom of the pot, coming through the hole up, so I have a tie down point. Now the thicker wire connects to this little loop. And after repotting, I'll quite clearly have explained to you how that works. Naturally, mesh to make sure the substrate doesn't fall out. Let's put it all together. So out of the pot, um, I left the substrate a little bit dry in the last couple of days, so it's easier to remove. Let's see how easy easy is. My aim is to get as much sand out of the root ball as possible and damage the roots as little as possible. So this is going to be a slower process than normal. And I might leave the 10% or so on the inside intact if that sits very, very difficult. Chopsticks are nice because you can just push it into the root ball and then tilt it a little bit and sand will come falling out without exerting too much pressure on the roots directly. And especially with sandy root balls like this, it works perfectly well. With the sun and the contrast, it might be a little difficult to see, but if you look, look all these roots, they're all on the outside. And here on the inside of the root ball, there's a few dead roots. There's actually here, okay, there's one alive root. But most of this is just pure sand without any roots. This is part of why we use an open substrate in bonsai. If you use an open substrate in bonsai, there's oxygen, there's water, um, fertilizer reaches the core of the root ball. It all helps to keep the tree healthier. And otherwise the roots just keep growing out and out and out and there's nothing on the inside. When you're working on the roots of your bonsai, it's important that they don't dry out. I just had to take a break. So I put them back, the plant back into the pot, and I made the roots a little bit wet. Typically it's best to just work on the roots in one session and then pot it as soon as possible. 
with most of the substrate removed, um, what we can tell is that these high roots that originally looked like the top of the root ball are actually not the top of the root ball. Here's a big root, there's a big root here. So I'm going to remove a few of these fine roots here and here. So they can plant it up a little bit higher and that way you expose the nabari more. Um, that creates of course a much wider root spread and of course it is a little bit painful to remove these tall higher roots but it is in the end good for a better root base and it's good for a better bonsai. Um, so what you now can tell here, very nice wide root spread sitting here and this is going to be the front of the tree. This of course sets the base for the future. So do this well and then later on at future repottings you have less work. Now this one I'm going to leave because it's such a heavy root. I'll remove it at another repotting and hopefully there's more roots here at the bottom. Almost pure sand, just a few roots. So I think I did a pretty good job not hurting the root ball. So it's tight in place uh, here on the big root, there on the big root and all four ends have been connected but it's good to keep in mind it still is a one point tie down so at the bottom there's only one wire it can wiggle but it can't go up and down now i'll fill it up with substrate for stability it's important to get substrate between all the roots and use a chopstick wiggle it side to side to get the substrate to move in between all the rocks uh, in between all the roots all the cracks all the crevices make sure every space is filled with substrate. So, substrate is in the pot, plant is secured, that finishes the repotting. Or does it? We still have this, right? And we still have two wires here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put this around the trunk, wire it down with these two wires sticking up, and then I have an anchor point where I can take the guy wires, pull them down and put the branches back in place. Just like that. And if this behaves, it gets a styling in winter. Right, it's a little bit later than winter. It is early spring, you can see. The tree has started to push a little bit and I want to wire it. I am a little bit late. I didn't want to wait this long, but this lower branch and that lower branch were just not looking all that healthy in winter. So I decided let's just wait until it pushes and then I'll start wiring because I don't want to lose these lower branches. Clearly this is a twin trunk tree but also fairly clearly if you look at the thickness of these main trunks it is quite tall. So what I want to do, I want to find a spot where I could reduce the branches even more. So I'll have to find a branch somewhere here that I can bring up and a branch here that I can bring up. So the total tree is not going to be much taller than this. Then I'm going to take these branches and I'm going to put them down at an angle of maybe something like this. Bending mostly here at the knuckle, the connection with the trunk. I would like to expand these branches into wider pads, shorten them a little bit and then have the branch tips sticking up. I hope that if I now do the pruning and the wiring, these inner branches, which are now not pushing, will create new buds and regain strength over the summer. So that by the end of the year, this is growing back again all the way on the inside. These can be pruned, so I have good hopes this will work. Um, I'm not going to keep all the branches. I want to keep it quite compact, but dense. So I'm going to leave quite a few branches on. During the wiring, I will here and there remove some of the old needles along the branches, but to be honest, it's too much work to remove them all. So it might be a little bit sloppy, a little bit lazy and leave some of them on. I can recommend to you the main branches, you should really remove all the old needles. It looks neater and it helps in back cutting. So I've wired out this first branch and what you can tell I've only wired out this main branch, one side branch, another side branch, and a side branch here. Um, all the smaller side branches I've not wired out, and I've placed them 
in a horizontal plane. If you now look from the front of the tree, you see that the branch gently comes down and then at the end evens out and once they start growing, the tips will come up, looking quite natural. This first branch is the one that sets the trend for all of them. So this one will go here and this one will also come down roughly like this. As this is a tree and not a shrub, I also removed the very fine branching all the way at the start. This creates openness in the canopy, light and air movement, and you see the trunk much better, you see the branches much better, and therefore it looks more like a tree than a shrub. So this is now prepared for wiring. This is going to come out, these are going to be split, and the whole thing comes down. But I'm going to use a tension wire to keep it in place if I can. As said, way too tall, but also quite a lot of lumps over this section. So this is actually much thicker than the area below. So I'm going to have to remove this and see what's left after that. That's a big part of the tree. To match that on this side, I'll have to go quite deep. Another big part of the tree. There's a top. And a second top. I think it would. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm wiring this branch, but it actually consists out of two branches here and here. This is a slightly heavier branch and I like to use thin wire. So I'm wiring out this branch, then the top branch, and the top branch gets a second wire that also goes over this one. And that way I hope that I have enough strength in my wires to keep the branches where I want it. Keep in mind this is a preliminary styling and I will have to rewire later this year. So what I said, I'm going to take the same wire, take the same path up in this tree. Here it is going to go over into the upper branch and here it is go just going to follow the path that my original wire here was also using um, this really is because i don't want to use thick heavy wire but it might not be the optimal way of starting a tree uh, originally you would say you use a thicker wire for the first part of the branch and you wire these two branches with a second thinner wire but well hey i'm lazy in fact, I don't have the right size of wire, to be honest. Um, didn't really want to admit that on camera. I need to go shop again. So now it should have enough power here on this one to bend down and stay in place. It is actually a little bit late in the season now to do this wiring. So I have to be careful not to overwork the tree. So because it is already springtime and the tree is already pushing, what I'm going to do is when I prune, I try to prune so that there's always pushing ends on the branch left. So I can prune it back here. And these branches will always be a fallback for the tree if it can't create a healthy bud here at the end anymore. So later in the season I could then trim back here if needed. Um, but I hope that it will just start pushing butts again later in the season. And even here in the back, I hope that this will start growing so I can just go all the way back here. This is another reason, um, besides it being late in the season for styling, the back budding here is going to take over the branch. So I don't need to wire out all these branches completely if I intend to use this later. But this is all so weak, I don't want to push it any harder than needed. So a little bit of a design dilemma. Um, I have two branches roughly at equal height, both coming to the front, which is not very pretty. Now I have another branch coming to the front here, but not on this side. So this one can go, creating a lot of open space, which isn't all that pretty. But that brings me to the other side of the design dilemma. This branch is actually much thicker than the branches below it and next to it. So officially I would have to remove this because it is too heavy. 
But now the artist comes in and says, well, you know what? I'm going to do something that not many trees have. I'm going to use this as a secondary top in the tree. Who knows, if it works out nice, over time I might kill off this whole part and just have a little side trunk coming up here and a bit of that wood here and fill out this canopy much more. But for now, this is going to be a little side top and I'm going to wire this around it. The bulk of the wiring is done. Let me remove this tension wires because I'm actually not using all that many of them. It's nice. Um, but you can tell I've brought a new top up. I've not pruned it drastically. I can of course still go through and say, well, all these branches that hang down, I can reduce. Then it creates a little bit of a cleaner image. But it is warming up. It is quite stressful what I've done to this tree. So I think I'll just leave it for the rest of the year. Allow it to grow a little bit. Um, here on top, I've pruned quite a bit. I'm not worried about back budding. On top of a tree, that will happen quite naturally. There are small buds on the branches. They will start pushing. Lower, as I said, I want to keep these. Um, yeah, and with that, I actually would like to invite everybody who made a 50 euro bonsai challenge tree to do a little update. Pop my name in the comments and I'll link it in the 50 euro challenge. I actually have created a library with all the videos that I could find on the 50 euro challenge. It's linked down below. Or of course you can just search in my timeline. Now, there we go. I think it is a reasonable outcome for 50 euros worth of material and the initial styling. The rest of the styling will happen later this year, next winter. But for now this needs to recover. It will go in semi-shade. These are fully sun resistant, but because of the work, it is better to shade it a little bit for the first one or two weeks. It has been a couple of weeks since I styled it and the tree is doing quite well. As expected, the, some of the needles are getting a little bit brown, but what we see here on top is something I wanted to show you, because that's the reason why I didn't create the yin in the first place directly. I want this to dry out a little bit over time. Let me get the camera a little bit closer and show you the leaking of sap nice and sticky. I don't want this all over the trunks. I want this to stay mostly on the top part and in winter I'm going to cut back a little bit. And right, as promised at the beginning of the video, an update on the U. Um, this one was styled over summer last year and it was repotted um, in a 50 euro, 50 dollar bonsai challenge. And right now it is pushing so much growth that I can actually start to thinning out. So this tree, doing quite well. I don't want all this growth here at the base. This is way too dense. I'm going to remove pretty much all here. Um, I just leave one branch here and there that I can later on to use them. That I can later. I'm leaving one branch here, just so that I can replace some of the long growth later in the season. I'm going to remove everything that sits here in the scorches. And clean it all out. But this video is not about this tree. This video is of course about my pizzeria. So I'm not going to show you what I'm going to do. Just wanted to show, yeah, it's doing fine. It's growing, it's healthy, pushing. Thank you for watching. I'm Jelle. This is Growing Bonsai, a pizzeria, bonsai, for less than 50 euros. Yes, it can be done.